Now I've spent a bit of time on the internet and trust me, there are some pretty dark places. So armed with my camera and my terrible sense of humour, let me introduce you to my new series, The Roundup. I promise unlike some of the previous series, this one will not just disappear like a fart in the wind. I've even put on my good coat suit to mark the first episode. Well, apart for the trousers. There was an incident this morning with some Cocoa Pops. I didn't really want to get into it. But anyway, the roundup's going to be where I take a look at the week and then I take the piss. You cool with that? Right, let's crack on. So let's start with the big news. Call of Duty World War 2. Unless you've been lost in a field for the last week, you'll probably already know Call of Duty dropped the new trailer for their highly anticipated boots on the ground game. Seriously, all I'm hearing is boots on the ground, then they go and throw in a fucking plane. Going by the likes to dislike ratio, it's clearly doing a little bit better than Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. To be honest, you can't really do much worse. 3 point Ali in particular is loving the news. He must have about 50 videos on the subject already. No in Activision though, it won't be long until they announce the supply drops that'll let you buy weapon camos in game. Denied. Cause nothing would say Call of Duty like dancing through Nazi occupied Germany with a luminous pink shotgun. To be fair, I'd probably buy that just for a laugh. Also this week, Insomnia and Resonate announced a joint event at the SECC in Glasgow. The hype's been building for this event and I may or may not be doing a meet-up. I am. If you're interested, I've linked the event's website down in the description. And now your song is this week, The Guardian posted a rather idiotic article. Didn't ask me how I found this, by the way. The article was asking the question, is gaming as addictive as gardening? No. Okay, they start and end with the same letters, but that's about where all the similarities end. Unless you're into gardening simulators, which would just be mental. I mean, who would buy a game just to go and cut the grass? For fuck's sake, really? And I'm sorry, right, but how is weeding some dirt as addictive as gaming? I've seen myself sitting up to 3 o'clock in the morning trying to prestige on Call of Duty. Or folk that are into gardening, out till all hours of the night trimming their tulips. Sneaking out in the middle of the night so as not to wake up their parents. Begging to stay up another hour just so they can put another coat of Ron Seal on the garden fence. I don't think so. Right, I'm sure everybody remembers the story about the doctor that was dragged off the United Airlines flight in Chicago. Oh my god! Well this week, the guy's lawyers confirmed that they've reached a settlement with United Airlines. So here's introducing the new CEO of United... Nah, not quite. They didn't want to disclose the figure, but you can guarantee that it was into the millions. What with all the media attention the story got. The memes going around were amazing. It's a shame they didn't realise that all they needed to calm the situation down was a can of Pepsi. <laughs> Here, I feel this suit makes me look like a football manager. The only thing that's missing is some sexist comments and a packet of chewing gum. Anyway, in sport this week, Kenny Miller signed another contract that will see him stay another year at Rangers. How are you still playing football? His grand wins are probably about to break into the first team, and yet here he is still scoring goals. It's going to get to the stage where Rangers are going to have to pay a nurse to sit on the bench to game his tablets at half time. Also this week, there's been some complaints about how rife gambling is in Scottish football. This comes after the SFL have announced that Ladbrokes are extending their sponsorship. You can't complain about that. That's like me standing drinking a can of Iron Brew complaining that people these days are drinking too much fizzy juice. And I'm sorry, but when did it become okay to tell people what they should and shouldn't do with their money? Now, didn't get me wrong, I'm not trying to promote gambling. All I mean is if you're sticking a couple of quid on the football now and again, it's hardly an issue. And anyway, if we didn't have a line on, how would we know what team we're supposed to support? So I'm briefly going to mention the old forum game that happened on Saturday there, where Celtic beat Rangers <coughs> 1 at Ibrox. Not to take anything away from Celtic, they did play well, but as I heard one of CJ Nova's subscribers say, Rangers were just a team full of empty jerseys. I don't want to get too much into the result because I want to make a separate video to discuss it, but Christ on a bike the Rangers team's in some state at the minute. Also in football this week, Alexis Sanchez took a dive after a ball was bounced off his face. Ha. Balls in the face. No, it hit him on the shoulder. Oh dear, oh dear. On the shoulder. Away he goes. Fair play. The lad did get him right in the puss. In the end, he just got a yellow card for diving. But that didn't stop Twitter going mental over it. So after a little cry, Sanchez posted some pictures to showcase his war wounds. Seriously? That's it? Christ, man, the way he went down you, they thought someone took his jaw clean off. So I'm going to be honest, I didn't really like discussing politics because everybody gets heavy into it. So instead, we're going to call this section. So, if you want the truth. so here, we're going to discuss all the things that the leader of the free world has been discussing on Twitter this week. Now, it's going to come as no surprise to anyone that Trump's been banging on about his wall again, which he even said himself, I'll be less of a wall and more of a fence. Yeah, there could be some fencing. Jesus, Donald, if you can't tell the difference between a fence and a wall, how are you meant to tell your arse for your elbow? He's also done nothing but moan about the way that the Democrats would have done things had they got into power. That is a lot of complaining. Has anybody told him that the election's over and that he actually won it? Because his Twitter feed just looks like a campaign for presidency. I think someone just needs to sit him down and tell him, look, Donald, 
You are the president. Divert your energy from battling the Democrats and focus on RUNNING THE COUNTRY! And stop tweeting a shit every time you're having a shit. Also, this is a fence, not a wall. So my favourite tweet this week comes from the Weatherspoons parody account. Headcount please Spooners. Did you all make it home with as many friends as you left with? Our cleaners found a sleeper. I love this account. Some of the tweets are just golden. Another tweet worth mentioning this week came from PewDiePie. I'm glad he's feeling better about the situation with his 50 million subscribers, but what about the rest of us? My arse is making buttons here. I just wanna be part of your Alright, so this week saw the lift of the YouTube embargo on Outlast, and my sub box has been filled to the brim with Outlast Part 1 Let's Plays. Can everybody please jump off that bandwagon before I run you down with it? You knew I was going to have to squeeze some moaning into this video. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'd appreciate if you could give me some feedback in the comments section. This series is a work in progress, and hopefully it'll look a little bit less shit every week. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you for watching and I'll see y'all right, fuck it, I'm going in. in the next video. I never said I'm the nicest guy in the world, but I'd rather die for my girl. I'ma buy her diamonds and pearls. And that don't mean that she's materialistic. I know she fell in love with me because I'm a lyrical misfit. We stare in the whip and the sunshine and cheering and singing. He's saying, I'm in love with the shape of you.